Greetings Mafia. I promised you I'll do a review on the new Blade Runner 2049 and I'm a man of my word. And you can say I'm a bit late to the party but as far as I understand the movie is still in the theaters. And don't worry it's gonna be a spoiler free review. Now my audience knows that I only do reviews on the movies that are worth seeing. You're not gonna hear me talk about gravity that's for damn sure. And as I told you before on my video about sex bots, I was very hyped up for this movie and boy I was not disappointed. Of course this movie is not as breathtaking as the first one after all how can it be? The first Blade Runner was a game changer and it started a whole culture and style of cyberpunk. It was widely imitated but it also served as a great inspiration. This one however is as red pill as it gets. It explores desolation as well as the lack of attachment between the sexes and in that way it goes much further than the first one. Women in this movie are as manly as it gets while the Nawaltz only exist as computer generated holograms. The main character is an actual relationship with one. For those of you new to my channel the Nawaltz stands for not all women are like that, you know the unicorns and speaking of unicorns the image of unicorn was also used in the original Blade Runner as a representation of a special woman men dream about. The unicorn appeared in Decca's dream while Rachel played the piano. I saw it in 3D and this movie really looks good, it's got top notch CGI as well as practical effects. Despite the fact that the dystopian future looks even worse than in the first movie. It was also refreshing to see something out of Hollywood that does not pander to feminism. On the contrary, like I said, this movie is really about reverse gender roles. Uh, the men are workhorses while women are, you know, they're completely deprived of any femininity. You know, if you want something feminine, you have to buy a program, literally. And the name of the program is Joy. Femininity has become a commodity because like I said the women in this movie are either bossy and manly as hell or prostitutes. Now check this out. Only one woman in this movie is actual flesh and blood and feminine. And she is literally kept under the bubble because she is considered to be one of the most valuable things. Uh, she is totally unaccessible. You can speak to her under certain circumstances but that's it. And I can't tell you anything more about it because that would be a major fucking spoiler but let's just say that a real woman with emotions, with feminine emotions is kept under the bubble. Uh, a special kind of virtual prison that's completely out of sight to a general public. Most people are not even aware of her existence. This movie also has strong sexual imagery. Erotic female statues and holograms are all over the place. Holograms are also heavily emphasized in this movie, not just sexually but also as a form of entertainment. Basically everything is a, a virtual reality. The system is really using people to play their own mind games in a process turning everyone into a customer. There is even a line in this movie that goes, we're glad you enjoy our product. And the product is really an emotional attachment. As far as racism, it's been handled pretty much the same way like in the original movie. If you recall, Decker described people who refer to replicants as skin jobs as the same type of people who used to refer to black men as niggers. So the racism is now focused on quote unquote models or types not races whether or not you are an actual human or a replicant aka skin job humanity feels a bit threatened by replicants much more than it did in the original movie in the original movie the rebellious replicants were really exceptions and everything was kind of swept under the rug while Blade Runners were actual death squads specialized in quote unquote retiring replicants. And this movie also poses the same question whether or not you have a right to kill something that has feelings and thoughts, whether or not it's been you know manufactured or natural. Another prominent theme in this movie is the lack of family. Nobody has a family in this movie. There's a very interesting scene, a very interesting scene in an orphanage and what makes it 
more interesting is that uh, most of the kids, damn near all of the kids, are white, while the guy running the orphanage is black. Now, I gotta say a few words about the villain. I couldn't figure if he's a replicant or a modified human. I don't know, I couldn't figure it out, but what's interesting about him is that he fancies himself as God. And I'm, I really mean that. He even refers to himself as the creator, God. Uh, much more than uh, Tyrell ever did. I mean, he never referred to himself as God. It was only when Roy Betty confronted him that he called him, you know, the maker and the father. But this guy pulls no punches. Now, what really makes him powerful is that through technology, he's able to create a strong emotional bond uh, that any man feels towards woman, whether or not this woman is from the past or part of his fantasy or whatever the case may be, he can actually create that woman uh, as a for, you know in the form of a replicant. But nonetheless, uh, if you have, for example, need that most of us have to any you know woman that you want to procreate with or start a family, whatever the case may be, he can make it happen. And he can create that strong emotional bond that most of us crave. I'm not talking about sex. This is not about sexuality. I already covered that part. You have, you know, holograms and prostitutes for that. I'm talking about the need we all have for another human being. You know, that Im strong emotional bond. He can make it happen. You know, he doesn't simply rely on his henchmen and, you know, brutality. He knows that if he can you know, tap into your deep desires and emotions, and if you know that he can make it happen, uh, that he can at least create that artificial utopia, that's going to make you more subservient, you know, you, you're going to be a happy slave, instead of being rebellious one, you know, you don't want to, you know, it's one thing you're dealing with a slave that wants to leave the plantation and um, cut master's throat, but in this case, you want to stay on the plantation because he gives you that you know, false feeling of attachment. And that's red pill moment in the movie. And again, I can't tell you more about it because I, I want to keep the spoiler free. But as, you know, you move along, you'll see that the movie is really building up to that. Now, the only problem I have with this movie is the pace. Because this, this is a long movie. This is a two and a half hour movie. And sometimes it gets really slow. But apart from that, it was a really a good sequel to a first film which predicted a lot of things. And I'm reluctant to say that this one does too. Uh, technology is not a solution to emotional issues or even, you know, uh, gender issues. But there is a bright side to all this. Uh, the movie does shows how, uh, regardless of how bad things will get, human spirit will live on. You know, human spirit is still out there. And there's an actual black pill moment in this movie. I shit you not. A very anti-system, rebellious black pill moment. And uh, they almost said it. <laughs> they almost said it. Uh, it was on, on the tip of everyone's tongue. But otherwise, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a really good sequel. I highly recommend it, but it's two and a half hour long, so get yourself a big popcorn. And that's all I got to say about it. This is Top Dollar signing off. They know you're here.